Bonjour everybody, welcome back to another episode of Broken Sword, The Shadow of the Templars. Alright, I've got to be honest, um, it's been quite a while since I last recorded this series. I, I did a big bulk batch of recording, um, so I know that we're playing with James and um, with Nicola. No, not really, I know it's George, it's George and Nico. Uh, and the last episode was all about the manuscript, right? We found... Oh wait, we left it at Nico's apartment. Yeah, we found the manuscript from um, Khan's trousers. Let's just have a look at a little notepad. That will help, won't it? Uh, she knew right away that it was something to do with the Knights Templar. And that we have to go to see Lobinul at the Kroon, Kroon Museum or something like that. Um, and yeah, there's hidden treasure. But... <laughs> I'm going to have to get back into the swing of things. I really shouldn't leave such a big gap, but there was Christmas and New Year's and... Uh, anyway, let's get on with this. So let's go to the map. Try and find out where this musée is. No, that's where we are now. That's the police station with the creepy police that are very inept. Aha! ha Musée Kroon. Oh, this looks lovely. Everywhere looks lovely, really. Uh, even the sewers look nice. Let's head inside. Ooh, look at this place. This is pretty. A metal rod attached to the wall was connected to the window. Okay, that's a bit weird. Why? Oh, okay. Window shut. Window open. Window shut. Oh, I don't know, I misclicked. Alright. Uh, there's a security guard who I don't think we can... Oh. Is he... Is he... Oh, sorry. Fine, alright, then I'll leave it. Uh, what else do we have here? What is that? In the case was a spindly tripod, blackened with age and pitted with rust. It was identical to the tripod pictured on the manuscript. A notice identified it as 15th century from Western Ireland. It had been found in Loch Marne at the site of a Knights Templar preceptory. Ireland! Was it? This tripod was found in Ireland. I will have to ask you to keep your voice down. I'm sorry, I was excited. What? what? This isn't a library, it's a museum, you fool. It was found in Ireland. Oh my, uh, why was that such a big deal for him? In Lochman Island, I don't know, but he was very excited, wasn't he? Okay, oh right, yeah, because on the manuscript there was four images, along with the one in the middle, of the two knights on a horse, but there was uh, the tripod with the diamond thing, there was uh, the loom, the man weaving on a loom, there was the lady looking in the mirror with three hideous faces, and there was... Uh, the Latin, the knight and the Latin next to him that said about the light or something. Blah. Anyway. <laughs> Let's carry on exploring. Watch out! You'll have that done on top of us! Oh, I think I misclicked. I think I did the do rather than look at. Hang on. The totem pole looked distinctly out of place in the setting of the museum. No, I don't think so. I think it... Fits in quite nicely. I can talk to that guy if I want. Uh, oh my goodness, it's Tutankhamun. It was an ancient Egyptian sarcophagus with a beautifully painted effigy of its owner on the lid. Open it. Let's get the Pharaoh's curse. Leave it alone. That closet is over 3,000 years old. Closet? It's a sarcophagus. You idiot. He says, as we're the one that just opened it willy nilly. <laughs> Why is none of this stuff behind, you know, screens or little little ropes? This is very hands on for a museum. Anyway, I guess we should talk to that guy and ask where Lobino is. The attendant had an air of self importance and the kind of steely eyes that never seemed to blink. Pardon me. Oui, monsieur? Are you Lobino? Oh, no. Fancy you mistaking me for him. No. I am the deputy 
custodian. But Labano does work here. Work? I wouldn't go so far as to call it that. He studies here most days, but as you can see for yourself, not today. Oh, typical. What can we talk about? Across the scroll or the tripod? Uh, is it? I mean, is this guy really going to know much? It's just the guy. It's just like a security guard. Do you know anything about the Knights of the Temple? No, sir. Not a sausage. The sign on the tripod says it was found at a Templar preceptory. It does? Yeah. It doesn't mention John D at all. Most remiss. You don't know anything about the tripod, do you? No, I don't. I never had much of a start in life, you see. I owe a little education I gained to my uncle. He was an optician, but he also doubled as the village school teacher. He taught me the alphabet. Wait, 19 letters of it. The bottom row of the chart was uh, too small even for him to read, so he left them out. Why don't you start over and enroll for adult education? You know, I never thought of that. Do you think if I studied art and did all my homework, I could be a professor of history? At your age? Dream on. <laughs> what a roller coaster of, of a conversation. I, I, it was getting all nice and emotional there for one moment, and then we just shut him down completely. Uh. How strange. Why did he start going into that? I didn't ask for your life story, guy. Do you know anything about medieval manuscripts? Not me, monsieur. I am no scholar. Though people often mistake me for one. It is the uniform, I guess. They see the clothes. They are impressed. And they ask you to park their cars? They ask me to park the... No, no, no. They assume I am an authority on the exhibits in my care. Whereas you know next to nothing about history. Of course not. All I am saying is, I am no scholar. Not like Monsieur Lobino. Fine. Uh, this is really getting us nowhere. Where's Lady Piermont? Bring her back. Can you give me any further information about the tripod? Certainly, Monsieur. It's infamous. That tripod? That belonged to John D. What? I thought it didn't say anything about John D. What's the importance of John D's tripod? D was the most famous escapologist of the 16th century. The Udini of his time. Don't you mean alchemist? Escapologists use ropes, chains, and handcuffs, not tripods. But whatever he was, that is the tripod he used in his experiments. I see. Uh, shock him. Would you like to shake my hand? Uh, not while I'm on duty, monsieur. Ugh. It's not a tissue? What do you make of this tissue? It is absolutely disgusting, monsieur. I know it's not snotty, but oh, whatever. Um, Photo? Maybe he might recognise the, the guy? Do you recognise the man in this photograph? No, monsieur. Is there any reason why I should? I guess not. Mm, I think the rest of this is kind of... Well, he might know about the... What was this again? Do you recognise this ID pass? No. Oh, that's what we used in the hotel to pretend that we... Yeah, I, I remember now. We got that from his trousers. Uh, that's his fake business. Khan's fake business. Um, let's finish off his tripod then. What kind of experiments did John D. perform with his tripod? Oh, the usual. Didn't you study chemistry at school? Yeah, but we skipped over thaumatology. Yes, I know what that means. Thaumatology? Hmm. Can I take a closer look at the tripod? What? Get it out of the case? Ah, uh, no! That tripod is protected by a sophisticated surveillance system. How sophisticated? A painfully loud alarm bell. <laughs> oh, no. What ideas have we got now? Oh. How is the alarm bell triggered? By the slightest pressure on or movement of any part of the case wherein that tripod is situated. It strikes me that to call your alarm system sophisticated is, well, stretching the truth a little. It has never failed yet. The sophistication is in its simplicity. So I'm guessing it goes off whenever a little bratty kid comes in and touches the glass, right? Very, very sophisticated. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I don't think we need to... What was This was the match thing, wasn't it? Have you ever heard of the Club Alamut? Oh, no. I don't frequent places like that. Do you recognize this red nose? I don't think so. Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised. And then how about this nice crowbar thing? What does this tool mean to you? That belongs in a museum. Pardon? It is a priceless historical artifact, if I am not mistaken. No, it's a plain old tool for lifting drain covers. <laughs> How embarrassing. Thanks for your help. Okay, so... Um... That wasn't really very useful. I mean, I guess we learned a little bit about the tripod, but... Can we go further this way, or is that it? Oh, he's got his back turned. Don't even think of climbing in there, monsieur. You'll be suffocated. Oh. I always wondered how it felt to be a mummy. So I wonder if we need to distract this guy. Maybe when he's closing the, the window. To either... I mean, I don't. I doubt we can steal that, because like I said, the alarm's going to go off. Although, can we see the bell? Maybe we could break the bell. Uh, I can't see anything else that is selectable, though. What about outside? No. Okay, hang on. Uh, let's go back in. I'm going to open the window. And I'm going to try this. Oh, it's right there, though. Ooh, move out of the way. Go to the window. No, I think I was too early. As I reached toward the display case, a shrill piping filled the air. I froze, then tried to get myself together and act nonchalantly. No, miss you. No, eh, no. Okay, okay. Hmm. Okay, now he's not going towards it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think he might be doing it now. Let's head over here as he does that. Okay, now we're hidden. This is ridiculous. I could be here for hours. Oh, I thought there might be something hidden in there, or I don't know. Uh, maybe we need to push that over? The big totem pole, pole thing? Let's try that again. It's definitely something to do with distracting him, because we could actually do that mummy thing when he did that, so... Yeah, let's... Attention! Please do not open the window, monsieur. Don't you think it's kind of stuffy in here? Better stuffy than dead. What's the problem? Fumes from car exhausts? Not just that, monsieur. There's a new bag of bar opened up across the street. The Laughing Buffalo. So what's the problem? They cook their burgers on a charcoal grill. And the fat falls on the open flames. The amount of organic compound and smoke particles released is astounding. Since they opened, local air pollution has doubled, and it stinks like a funeral pile. That is why I keep the windows closed. Uh, okay, well, I'm still going to do it as soon as you walk away. <laughs> Take that, idiot. And then I'm going to knock over this, or at least try to do something with this. Come on. Think of the think of the pollution. Yes, 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 yes. Damn, I didn't do anything. <laughs> Watch out! You'll have that done on top of us. Hmm. I wonder if I was knocking it the wrong way. If I'd have gone this side and pushed it, would it have fallen over that way? Let's try that instead. Well, he always goes from that side. So never mind. 
Hey, no! What's wrong? You must- I'm sorry. Hmm... Well, I'm not too sure then. What am I missing here? Unless we could use the tool to do something? I don't really know. Uh, I think I might come back here in a bit. Let's see... You, mind you, there's no, there isn't really anywhere else to go. Unless maybe Nico knows where Lobano might be if he's not here in the museum. Let's try that. Ah uh ha -huh. Hi. I've been to the crew museum. Did you speak to Lobano? No, he wasn't there. Oh, okay, we can talk about the tripod, I guess. It's kind of new. I found the tripod. Where? In the museum. It belonged to the Templars. It was dug up in Ireland at a place called Loch Marn. I have heard of Loch Marn. I read an article about the castle. Take a look for yourself. A popular gossip magazine? You read that rubbish? No, I write it. Professor Nigel Pegram excavating the medieval castle at Loch Marn. That's strange. What? He resigned his chair at Durham University in order to devote his time to the excavation. Not only that, but he cancelled the filming of a fourth series of his popular television program. This site at Loch Marn must be awful important to him. He's a professor of history, Daryl Cuckoo. All the same, I'd like to talk to this Professor Pegram. How do you feel about a trip to Ireland? Disappointed. Huh? That I won't be going. I want to follow up the Belotta case. If you really think Pikram's gem is important, why don't you visit Lochman? On my own? I'm not so sure about that. Where is Ireland exactly? <laughs> Silly yank. Uh, are we really going to go to Ireland? That's pretty cool. I thought it would just be stuck in Paris for the whole game. But actually, I, I hope not because it's you know, like a treasure hunt. We need to go around the world. Uh, what else is there to talk about really? There's nothing too new. Let's take another look at the manuscript. Oh, no, that's not. I don't want to. Go back. Back out. There's a guy between... Do I need to look at it all just to get out of this screen? That's really annoying. But... And through my... Okay, great. That was really useful. Thanks. Have you found out any more about the murders? Well, it may be nothing, but both the clan's victims visited Paris earlier this year. When? The second week of July. They were both here at the same time. Did they meet? I don't know, but I can't imagine it was coincidence. Okay, well... That's about it, really. I have to go. Okay, I'll see you later. I wonder if... <gasps> oh my god! Wait! Wait a minute. Do you think we can go on the trip to Ireland with Lady Piermont? <gasps> what if we can? Wait, where is the... Where is the Hotel Ubu? Can we not go there anymore? Oh no! Lady Piermont, no! I need to see you! Was it that one that's now greyed out? Oh wait, we can go to the airport. Never mind. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, we can just go straight to Ireland. Without Lady Piermont, no. A few hours later... I passed the castle on the way into Loch Marn. The castle where Pegram's excavation was located. Wow, okay. And suddenly, we're in Ireland. To be sure, to be sure. Wow, that was quick. I kind of like it though. Uh, where are we? We're at Mac... McDevitt's Food, Bar and Lounge. Uh, do, do, do. Island, the Lochman Gem. Lochman, what a beautiful village. Nico and I must really be onto something here. Ancient manuscripts, the Knights Templar, and a tripod from a medieval manuscript. All I need is the gem that goes with it. I will start by asking the locals about Pegram and his dig. Well, I know all about digging. Having played the dig, another point and click. Hello, you. The lad was doing his best to express his adolescent aggression. His effort was somewhat diminished by the fringe of milk on his lightly feathered upper lip. <laughs> oh, well, he's trying. Uh, 
Hi there. What? What's your name, kid? Who are you calling, kid? Who the hell are you? Uh, why are we... Oh, oh we're going to pretend to be the French detective. Or yeah, sergeant, whatever. Rosso's the name. Murder's my game. Are you a detective? Let's just say I'm here to find the truth. Cool. Just like on the telly. Cut the crap and tell me your name. Liam McGuire. What are you doing hanging around the bar, McGuire? I'm on the run. From me dad. Why? Did you do something bad? I ain't done nothing, boss. You can tell me, kid. Is it your dad? Oh, sir. He drinks. Every last penny. Down his evil throat. And there's me poor old mother. Bedridden and dying of presumption. I tried to buy her medicine. Chopped firewood for father Mahoney till me fingers bled. The old skin flint cheated me too. But I took the pennies he gave me back home. Look, ma, says I. See what your darling son has earned with his own sweat and blood. When suddenly, me dad appears and grabs the loot. I'm off to Dublin, heavy drinking, says he. Watch out till I get back. That's why I runned away. Something in the grin on his face told me he wasn't being strictly truthful. Compared to him, Huckleberry Finn was a candidate for Altar Boy of the Year. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really sound very truthful. And also his accent's a bit strange. Sometimes he sounds very scouse. Uh, anyway, what can we talk about? The castle? A clown from Paris? Imagine going to another country and saying, oh yeah, there was this clown in back there. This person's going to be like, what? Who cares? And is that meant to be his dad? Do you know a man called Pegram? Can you describe him like on the telly in the cop shows? He's an English archaeologist. I know the man you mean if he's the one. Oh, okay, that's Pegram. Right, well then, where is he? Can you tell me where I'd find Pegram? No, I can't, because he's not here now. But if I seize him, I'll ask him. Do you know what Pegram was doing in the castle? Digging for buried treasure. Jewels and gold and skeletons, like in the films. Have you seen a guy dressed as a clown? Here in Lochmarn, they all dress like clowns. The man I'm looking for is a dangerous psychotic. Jesus. It's just like that film I saw. There's this clown, see? And he's after this kid who saw him kill a guy. He tries to warn the sheriff, only no one believes him. Then, while he's in the tub, the clown cuts him up with a chainsaw. My God. That doesn't sound suitable for a kid like you. Who are you calling a kid? I'm 25. Yeah, right. You're not a day over 14. Oh no, it's 25 that I am. Married with a car and three kids. Ten kids if you count the wives. <laughs> I like this kid. I, I'm, I'm liking the fact we're in Ireland now with these very strange accents. And I love the fact it even spelled out Jesus. <laughs> But Jesus. Uh, okay, let's just quickly ask. Maybe he knows where the castle is. What can you tell me about the castle, Maguire? What do you want to know? Well, can I get inside? No. It's locked up. Does anyone live there? No. Only, what do you want to know? Oh, nothing. You know something about the castle you're not telling me, don't you? No. What is it you're covering up? Is it something you're scared of? I ain't scared of nothing. I'll give you one last chance to tell me about the castle. Oh, yeah? And what if I don't? Then I'm taking you back to school. Oh, there's a ghost. It's called the Phantom Aloch Man. <laughs> this is really getting out of hand. We've, we've gone to a different country on a whim because of one little tripod after being nearly killed. And now we're talking about ghosts. Uh, before that though, hang on, can I... I'm sure people here in Ireland are, more, are far more receptive to, to a handshake than, than the people in Paris, right? Give me your hand. Get lost. Oh, come on, I just want to show you a little trick. No way, mister. I don't do tricks. Father Mahoney told me I'd burn in hell if I did. I just want to shake your hand, that's all. No way. Uh, I guess I was wrong. You're not telling me you believe in ghosts, are you? Mister, I seen it with me very own eyes. Last Tuesday night, I went up to see what that dig was about. 
I just reach the top of the wall when I hears this awful noise. What sort of noise? A horrible snuffling and snorting, like O'Brien's pig, only worst. It was coming from inside the castle. Did you find out what was making the noise in the castle? No fear. I just sat there on the wall like Humpty Dumpty. The moon was cracked and greasy like an old dinner plate. The yard was full of shadows that could have been hiding anything. I would have gone home, but me legs had lost their stuffing. Did you get to see the ghost? Indeed I did. And a fearsome sight it is too. I sat on me ass, waited while the moon went down. Then out it comes from the shadows, all grey and tattered and hunched over like an old bent willow. Then I hears this spluttering and splashing and horrible laughter in the dark. I was so scared. Why, I fell off the bloody wall. <laughs> this is such a nice change in, in, the type of, in the type of dialogue now. I sat on my arse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a rational explanation for what you saw at the castle. There is. The bloody place is haunted. Okay, I'm tired of you now. What was your name? Jimmy? Timmy? Liam? Maguire? Something? Uh, here's a, here's a bit of tissue. What does this tissue mean to you? Nothing. Fair enough. Have you ever seen this man before? What a slimy character. Nope. I never seed him. Okay, I think I'm done. I'm not these. I'm not really bothered about using these very much anymore because it's kind of done. I'm kind of done with those. So, bye bye. See you later, kid. Okay, Mister. I think it's time for a Guinness. Oh wait, what's that? It was a featureless plastic box firmly attached to the wall of the building. Can we open it? I tugged at the plastic cover, but it didn't move. Hmm, okay. It was a trap door in the sidewalk. Oh, we can use our thing for that, maybe. Perhaps, but first, Guinness. Oh, look at the characters in here. Oh, there's a guy on a fiddle. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've been to Ireland. There was no people fiddling in... Actually, there was. <laughs> Tell a lie, there was. Uh, who should we talk to first? Um, this guy looks like he doesn't... Well, he looks like he's waiting for someone, and also he doesn't really fit in. He looks kind of suspicious, actually. The young red-haired guy was plainly nervous about something. Who are you? My name's George. Pleased to meet you, mister. My name's Fitzgerald. Oh, I like that name. What, you, what is he drinking? Coke? Can I get you another drink? Oh, no, thank you. I, I shouldn't be drinking at all. I'm on tablets of my nerves. More than a pint and I'll pass out. Okay, fine. What can you tell me about the castle? There is nothing there. Just an old ruin. How old? I really couldn't tell you. Have you ever explored the castle yourself? I used to play there sometimes, when I was a kid. Then one of the little ones fell off the wall, broke his head and died. We didn't go there anymore. You haven't been up there recently? No. Oh, that's horrible. Maybe that little kid is the ghost. Do you know Professor Pegram? He's the archaeologist, isn't he? That's right. Did you work at Professor Pegram's dig? <laughs> what gave you that idea? Hmm. Why is he acting so funny? Let's shake his hand. Shake my hand. It's a trick, isn't it? Damn it, you're right. I can't seem to fool anyone. Joe, you know I think we're going to go through the whole game and never be able to do that, and that's going to be the running gag. Until maybe right at the end, and it's the final boss. Maybe against Khan himself, and we get him with the shocker. Uh, what else can we ask? I feel like there's more to this guy, but our options are, are done. Um, the man? Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, I'm sure I don't know him. No, okay, um, let's leave you for now. See you later. Who next? What's that on the bar? It was a beer-stained piece of toweling. Mmm, suck on it. 
It was a beer-stained piece of toweling. That we've now stolen. Uh, beer. <laughs> beer. Right. Let's try and order a drink. The white whiskers on the bartender's flushed face were like garlands on a Christmas tree. The resemblance ended there. The top of his head was too slick and shiny to act as a perch for a Christmas angel. Top of the morning to you. I beg your pardon? Well, that's what you Irish say, isn't it? Do you want something? Or are you just flaunting your xenophobia? Well, I, I was trying to be sociable. <laughs> Is it a room you're after? Yeah, if you ever go to Ireland, don't say top of the morning to you. It's, it's just, just don't. Uh, do we want a room? I guess we, we do need a room, right? Yeah. That's not a bad idea. Do you have a vacancy? I could. If you don't mind waiting until the last guest checks out. No problem. When will that be? When the undertaker comes to collect him. Um, okay, that's... We're not going to talk about that, are we? Or are we? I guess let's have a drink first. I'll try a glass of beer, please. Is this your first pint of real ale? Uh, well, I guess so. What's real ale, anyhow? Beer that's brewed from natural ingredients to traditional methods. It shouldn't be kept under pressure or refrigerated. And finally, it should have a good body and distinctive character. In other words, it's flat and warm with bits in, and it makes you fall over. Are we going to act drunk now? Are we going to start slurring our words? That'd be pretty good. Have you served any, uh, clowns recently? No. You're the first today. <laughs> oh, good one. Do you know a man called Pegram? Indeed I do. Are you a friend of his, by any chance? Oh, no. I'm just trying to track him down. Me too. That son of a bitch should be locked away. Did Pegram stay here? Yes, he did. Six nights plus breakfast. Oh, did he not pay or something? What's he done? Shake my hand. Hey, bartender? Uh, landlord, if you don't mind. Sorry. Uh, shake my hand, why don't you? Now, why should I do that? What have you got up your sleeve? Nothing. Come on, just shake my hand. Uh, not just now, mister. I have to be careful on account of the health restrictions. Oh, jeez. Well, that's scarily accurate for now. <laughs> okay. Uh, what else can we... What is that? Is that like a dishwasher in the background, I wonder? What else can we talk about? The guy... I feel like the most useful things we have is the guy, photograph... Not even... I mean, the rest of it. Not really. Does he want his beer mat back? May I borrow this towel? Sure you can. On one condition. What's that? You keep it away from old Ron. Who's Ron? That's him in the corner with the hygiene problem. Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay. Are you... Maybe he wants our, our tissue. Do you recognize this man? No, I don't. What do you want with him? I've got a score to settle. I don't want any trouble in the bar, mister. If it's a fight you're looking for, see Father Mahoney. A priest? A man of the cloth? Sure. And he teaches the boys how to box at the youth club. According to Mahoney, it develops character. Isn't that right, Pat? Didn't he teach you all the art of pugilism? Doyle. Sorry, Michael. I was miles away. What did you say? Ah, never mind. Oh, this is like Moe's. It's just, you know, the bar flies sat. Um, okay, I'm done with you now. Bye. Look, I gotta be going. Can I talk to everyone? Oh, I can. What's this guy? There was a vacant look on his cow-like face that said quite clearly, nobody home. Hi, my name's Stobart, George Stobart. Hello there, mister. What can I do for you? Do you know Professor Pegram? Do I know him? Do I know the good professor himself? No, I don't. I mean, I know who he is, but I don't know him to talk to. Do you know anything about Pegram's excavation? Only that he didn't have the right tools for the job. What he needed was shovels and a JCB. Pegram was digging for historical remains, not coal. Is that a fact? What the hell for? Here's the science of archaeology, Pat. 
Understanding how people used to live by what they've left behind. One day archaeologists might be digging up our remains. Imagine that, Mr. O'Brien. I wonder what they'll find. Well, it won't be arrowheads and beakers. Fast food cartons and flavoured condoms, more likely. <laughs> Ribbed. Uh, all right, let's see. I don't. Really, these guys don't know anything, do they? Well, this guy seems. I mean, that was quite a, a wise thing that guy just said. Maybe he's the one to talk to. But let's just carry on with this conversation. Did anyone from the village work at Pegram's Dig? I tried it myself, but that high and mighty history man called me incontinent. What a nerve! Hadn't I dug more holes than the rest of them put together? Oh, this guy says a lot of D's, doesn't he? Uh, oh, and now... Oh, we can talk about that guy. Interesting. Do you remember seeing Sean Fitzgerald at the dig? Hmm. Let me see now. I think me brain box needs a spot of lubrication. All right, here we go. Can I buy you a drink? You most certainly can. Give me a drink for my friend here. Who? Doyle? Has he conned you into buying for him? Shame on you, Patrick. Same again. Just a point this time, Michael. One point of brown coming up. Do you remember Sean Fitzgerald now? I can picture the scene as if it was only last week. Come to think of it, it was only last week. Fitzgerald was there all right. Him and a bunch of students. He was speaking with the boss man. Can you tell me anything about the castle on the hill? Oh, I don't know much about anything. You should ask Mr. O'Brien here. He does joined up writing. Would you be one of them history fellows yourself? Uh, uh, hmm. I mean, we've lied enough already, so sure. That's right. Professor Stobart, Miskatonic University. You're an archaeologist, and you're asking us about the castle. Excuse me, Mr. O'Brien. The gentleman was talking to me. How come you didn't leave with the others? I didn't know they'd gone. Oh, yes. Packed their spades and shovels and away they went. Seems I missed all the excitement. What excitement? All right. Well, I'm done with you now, except for one last thing. May I shake your hand? No, you can't. Well, how come? Because I'll spill me beer if you do. <laughs> okay, okay. I really should just stop trying, but no, I'm stubborn. Bye for now. Stubborn Stobart. Anything? Can I pick up those? No. And then there's that snotty guy over there. Can we go in the back? No. Hmm. I guess we should just finish talking to everyone. The guy sat in the corner as if he was a permanent fixture. Hello there. Uh, my name's George Stobart. Pleased to meet you, I'm sure. Hey, O'Brien. Uh, can I help you? Oh, man, we could talk about everything with this guy. He's, he must be very wise with his big bald head. Do you know Sean Fitzgerald? Yes, I do. What do you want with him? I want to talk to him about working at the dig. I can't imagine anyone implying Sean Fitzgerald on a dig. He wouldn't know a post hole from his elbow. Have you heard of the Phantom? More than that. I've seen it. And let me tell you, it's a dreadful spectacle. So it's not just a local legend. There really is a Phantom of Loch Marne. Oh no. I was talking about the Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> I would like to see that someday. Have you ever heard of the Knights Templar? I most certainly have. A remarkable institution. Did you know, they were the originators of our system of credit. Their financial empire stretched from the Atlantic to the Caspian Sea. With bases in so many countries, they had to establish new methods of fiscal transfer. So, the Knights Templar were nothing but a bunch of bankers. I don't get it. Are you saying these Templar guys invented bank charges? In a manner of speaking, I suppose they did. What a dirty trick. Didn't anyone try to stop them? Oh, yes. They were arrested and many were burnt at the stake. Good. They bloody well deserved it if they were anything like my bank manager. This guy seems to know a fair amount. I'm, I'm very impressed. What can you tell me about the castle, Mr. O'Brien? It's a fine sight now, isn't it? Dates back to the 10th century, you know. Most of the existing building was added much later, of course. Are the ruins open to the public? Oh no, it's much too dangerous. Anyway, there's nothing of interest remaining. 
You know, there's always one of these types of guys at, in a pub. You know, the one that's always sat, the permanent fixture, as as George kind of noted. It's always got something to say and, and just goes on and on and on and they just end up kind of walking away. <laughs> but we'll stay just for the time being. We've got a few more things to ask him. How can I get into the castle? Well, those wards were built specifically to stop people getting in, Mr. Stobart. But I dare say you'll find a way if you've the will. I do. Can you tell me about the tripod which was found at the castle? Now there's a bone of contention and controversy. It was dug up by an Englishman of the archaeological persuasion. Who was this Englishman? Professor Pegram. The same man who dug up the gem. Oh, he dug up a gem too? Hmm. Do you know where I can find Pegram? You're too late to meet that fella. Is he dead? Not that. But he's gone from the village. A saw point with our esteemed host, I might add. Why is Pegram's departure upset the landlord? He's lost a paying guest, that's why. More than that, there's the question of an unsettled bill. Poor Michael seen red over the business, and I don't blame him. Can you tell me more about the landlord? Mick Leary? He's what you call a, a would-be sophisticate. The trouble is, his idea of sophistication extends as far as putting paper in the lavatory. I never worked out why he did that. It's much too dark in there to read. That's true. Have you ever run your hand over the back of the door? The graffiti is written in Braille. Do you know where Pegram has gone? I'm sorry, but I don't. He hoped anchor in the dark and shipped out before the dark. Why did he do that? Who knows? A guilty conscience or a secret assignation. Whatever the reason, he'll not be missed in Lachmar. Maybe now the fuss about the gem has died down. We can get back to normal. Oh, the gem. What can you tell me about the gem which Pegram found? Now there's a gem which should never have been taken. A man would have to be full of greed to covet that stone. What's your interest in the jewel? You're not a reporter, are you? Uh, hang on. So we just lied to that guy right next to him. So it would be wise not to lie to the guy here. But we're going to do it anyway. Yes, that's right. Another bloody news hound. Well, you're wasting your time here, boy. You find the people of Lachman are a tight-lipped and cautious lot. Why? Have you got something to hide? It's just that we don't like to wash our dirty laundry in public. Mm, speaking of which, do you want to clean this for me? What do you make of this tissue? Well, I guess that muck on it is grease paint. You're right. I'd like to shake you by the hand, Mr. O'Brien. Oh, no you don't. <laughs> well, not even an explanation, just no. Just a flat out no. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Nope. I've never seen him before. Okay. Goodbye for now. Uh, good riddance to you. Four down, two left to go. We'll leave Snotty Guy till last, so how about Fiddle Man? He wasn't listening. Alright then. Um, I guess we don't want to disturb him. Let's go see this guy then. Hi there, old timer. What? Nasty cold you've got there. As soon as the words left my lips, I regretted them. Is there such a thing as a cold which isn't nasty? I put the question to Father Mahoney. Father, says I, why were we born to suffer snot? What did he say? He said it's my reward for being out all night like a sinner. Pious prig. Anyway, this is no ordinary cold. It is the hay fever. Polynosis? Thank you. You're not a policeman, are you? Excuse me? Police. No. I'd know it if you were. Why Why is he acting so suspicious? Can I buy you a drink? Can I buy you a beer? Very kind, I'm sure. But I don't drink the stuff Leary sells. What's wrong with it? I've seen what it can do. Well, then why are you even here if you don't like the drink? Uh, I guess it, it maybe he's staying here as well. I don't know. Can you tell me how to get into the castle? Don't even think about it, me bucko. Lockbarn Castle is haunted. That's what the kid outside told me, but I don't believe it. Then you're a fool. Ghosts don't bother me. I still want to visit that castle. You can't. It's not open to the public. There's no one around to stop me, is there? That's right. Nothing human, anyhow. Have you ever seen the ghost? To be sure. 
with me very own eyes. Can you describe the ghost? It was horrible. A wee stunted beast, long beak, straggly, flappy wings. Are you sure it wasn't a wild animal? A rabbit or a skunk or something? Skunk? In Loch Marne? That'll be the day. No, that was a ghost, to be sure. To be sure, to be sure. To be sure? I think I know what you saw on the castle wall. I know what I saw. I don't think so. It was the kid, Maguire. What? He was up on the wall last Tuesday night. He thought you were the Phantom of Loch Marne. Oh! Oh, just a little bit of misunderstanding. Maybe they're all drunk. Do you know Pegram, the archaeologist? That's the scrawny fellow who was poking around at the castle, isn't it? No, I don't know him. What's that you're making? It's a necklace, me poco. Oh, sure. Made out of steel wire? <laughs> That's right. A necklace for my pretty one. When my little lover feels it round her slender neck, she'll be mine. All mine. <laughs> <laughs> Did that guy just turn into a witch at the end there? <laughs> right, shake my hand. Hey, would you like to shake my... Uh, no, on second thought, forget it. Oh, right, yeah, snotty. How about the tissue? You could make use of this tissue. Never use them. Those things are unhygienic. What if we try and give him the towel that this guy said not to? Could you use this towel? I could. But it wouldn't be much use for anything else. Alright, fine. Well, bye. I'll see you later. Uh, I wonder if we can go back to this guy now, because we know that he's up to something, and maybe not being entirely truthful. Mr. Fitzgerald? Doyle told me you definitely worked at the dig. He's seen you there. You might as well admit it. I knew this would happen. I knew I'd get caught. I need to talk to Professor Pegram, if he's still alive. What do you mean? Is he in danger? Yeah, you too, if I'm right. You're not from the Social Security. Hell no. What makes you think that? Well, uh, I was claiming benefit at the same time I was working for Pegram. I'm not in a position to make judgments, Sean. That's between you and your conscience. All I want is to talk to Pegram about the gem. But he's not here! I know that. But he left that package with you, didn't he? Okay, I got a little bit distracted. Oh, it just happened again. Our head is up that guy's arse. <laughs> uh, just ignore that. So where did Pegram go? I don't know. I swear it. He came to see me early this morning. Said he was leaving. He asked me to give this package to a guy called Marquet. Oh, people keep disappearing. Where are they going? Show me what's in the package, Sean. I, I can't do that. Why not? I promised the professor. So what? You didn't have any qualms about your benefit scam. So where's the harm in taking a peek inside Pegram's package? You don't know these people. I can't. I don't dare. Oh, that's it. We're doing it. This is your last chance to show me the package, Fitzgerald. I've been patient with you, but now it's time to kick ass. But he'll kill me. Who will? The man from Paris. Jack Marquet. Pegram told me if I gave him the package unopened, I'd hear no more about it. But if I double-crossed Marquet, I'd be dead. Ooh, Marquet. Uh, well, it can't be that guy, because otherwise, well, maybe he hasn't seen him, so he wouldn't recognise him, but maybe it is Khan. I'll deal with Jacques Marquet. Give the package to me. No, why should I trust you? I don't know who to trust anymore. I wish I'd never even heard of the Logmarn gem. Hey, I just seen a big red. Get out of here, Maguire. Come back when you're old enough. What's the lad howling about? A big red sports car. Sean Fitzgerald's been run over. Get. Out! Noisy little tyke. Maybe you should send out some medicinal brandy, Michael. Oh, yes. And who's going to pay for it? Not me. Me too, neither. 
Wow, okay, no one cares about a kid just being run over. <laughs> I thought the I Irish were a bit more hospitable. <laughs> oh, as we phase through tables and arses. Okay, what do we say? Came across this guy, Sean Fitzgerald, who was as nervous as a long-tailed cat. He'd been given a package by Pegram and told me to give it to someone called Jacques Marquet. Okay, let's have a little sneak peek about what happened outside. I hope he's not dead. I was telling the truth about Fitzy, mister. Okay, okay, calm down. Now tell me what happened. I was standing here, minding me own business, when I saw this beautiful red sports car coming up over the hill. Would you look at that, says I. And I going over to take a closer look. Next thing, Fitzy comes tearing out of the pub and nearly knocks me on the ass. But the car just flies at him. It was too fast for poor old Fitzy. And hit him an awful wallop. He goes flying up on top. Jesus, says I. I thought he was a goner. Next thing, the driver hops out. And I couldn't believe my eyes. He was dressed like a bloody pixie. Oh no. The costume killer. Uh, Fitzgerald panicked when I caught him out. Rushed out to the pub and was run over by a leprechaun. Khan rented a leprechaun suit. It must be him. Not only that, but the gem fell down the drain, right? And opened up this little fuse box thing. Huh. Well, what a dramatic ending to this episode. I think uh, I think we're going to call it there. A bit of a longer one today. I might start doing some longer episodes. Uh, but yeah, we'll explore more and try and find that gem next time. Until then, thank you very much for watching. And goodbye.